let's talk about the uncanny. The uncanny is a phenomenon where something mysterious or unnerving takes on the feeling of familiarity, a piece of the past or a buried memory resurfacing in a twisted way. Psycho is constantly operating in a state of the uncanny. The grandiose structure of the song is constantly sprinkled with undercurrents of techno and shoeglaze electric notes. It's creating a bridge between past styles of music and modern trends. Where there are obvious modern pop sections, the whole song is tied to an older ghost of music. Psycho is, all at once, past, present, and future, creating a work that exists in a vacuum of time. The song is flavored with pop and R&B, but also hints of old indie and neo-spice. Orchestral moments add sensation to the song, especially regarding Wendy, who is the aerodynamic skin of the song. Sulgi is without a doubt the beating heart of the song, and Psycho takes full advantage of her range. The uncanny is a very important part of Psycho, the past coming back to haunt you. Mirrors, shadows, figures behind doors, all symbols of memory, symbols that the girls are running away from. Old sewing machines, smoke, corrugated metal. We see modern-looking buildings hodgepodged with elegant mansion backgrounds. These are all symbols of mystery and age, symbols of entering the unknown. It feels at once familiar and foreign. The entire visual and auditory concept is a callback to other songs and videos from previous years. It even references other Red Velvet videos opening up the annals of time to the present and subjecting them to further scrutiny. Does the past impact the present? Is the past as good as we wish to pretend it is? The members themselves are styled more maturely and intimately than ever before, harking back to the themes of aging and remembering. You've got me feeling like a psycho, people keep telling us we fight like it's our last, and then we get along, they don't get it, it's so funny. The lyrics are a journey through the duration of this love, the beginning, the middle, and end, the timelessness of this relationship. The themes of Psycho play closely to Jeffrey Jerome Cohen's Seven Theses of Monsters, specifically Thesis 2, The Monster Always Escapes. No matter how many times you slay the beast, its memory prevails. Nosferatu can never truly die as long as people remember him, and the vampire will always find a new story in every generation. Nearly every one of Red Velvet's Velvet tracks plays with this thesis. The cult in Peekaboo, the wolf in Really Bad Boy, even the femme fatale in Bad Boy, all of them escape by the end of the story, leaving behind their impact and their memory. Even the tones and established melodies of these songs play an active role in Psycho, calling back the memory of them. The love story depicted in Psycho is much the same, emphasizing that the relationship is in constant turmoil. The monster here is the past and how it hurts us in the present. Psycho is a moment in conflict, both upbeat and sad, combining light, fairy-like techno and powerful strings. The song is an audio reference to older eras of K-pop, but in a new light, using both nostalgia and recreation. We could argue that the song exists in a postmodernist state, combining regurgitation and hodgepodge pastiche. We're forced to look at the past to understand the present. Who are we right now? Are we forever bound to the past? Can we truly separate ourselves from the past and enter an unknown future? Do we even want to? The car parked inside the dining room, the lights that flicker on and off. Psycho is a set of a horror movie, but instead of invoking fear, it invokes elegance and calm. Even people who love each other fight, and in the heat of it, the psychotic nature of that love can be felt. And while this is true of any couple, because it's normal to fight, the song also emphasizes the relationship has a forgiveness element. What looks psychotic to outsiders is actually just a part of the communication. Whether or not that's completely healthy isn't up for them or us to decide. Red Velvet has created a relationship caught in a shade of gray. It makes sense to them, but not to others. We're fools who love each other too much. Without you, I feel dizzy and sad. I feel low. The audience is constantly shown that this love isn't pure and wholesome, it's caught at a breaking point. The music video references the red string of fate and then snaps it, as well as the cunning of the yarn, which we know from Greek mythology symbolizes the end. The past is constantly tripping over itself inside this love, and the memory of past pain keeps causing trouble. Things we wish we could forget don't leave us alone just because we're in love. And at a moment like the one depicted in Psycho, We've encountered something new in this relationship that reminds us of an old ghost, the uncanny. That alone could be enough. It's an interesting, complex, and arguably realistic relationship being depicted where most other songs only depict simple love or simple breakup. Psycho would then be a well-crafted part of many of the other darker, sadder, love-ending pieces we've seen this year. But this comeback goes a step above and beyond. 
The glass breaks, the butterflies are freed, we turn away from the mirrors, and we commit to putting the past behind us. Musically, the end of the song transitions into something uplifting and hopeful, and the shadows start to part. It could be about a love story, but it could also be about any moment of genuine pain, confusion, and conflict that we experience. Psycho calls to Cohen's first monster thesis. The monster body is a body of culture. The monster represents a specific moment in time in a culture. In a year like the one we've had, we've seen unbelievable struggle and grief on all fronts. I'm sure we all feel something of a love-hate relationship with the fandom right now. Psycho doesn't romanticize pain, conflict, or unhealthy relationships, but rather embraces pain as a part of the human experience and the world at large. The song never references a specific lover, leaving the interpretation open. At the end, the narrative agrees to seek out hope and come to peace with the past in order to preserve the future. It's a song about hope and future, not pain and past. We can embrace our feelings and feel our pain. We don't have to deny ourselves what we feel or self-silence in the pursuit of looking strong or pure or healthy, because that's actually unhealthy. By coming to terms with our pain and our struggles, that's how we create health for ourselves. In doing so, that's the only way we can step forward. It's not a song about hurting. It's a song about healing. The final 30 seconds of the song are dedicated solely to reminding us, hey now, we'll be okay. 